In this video, we're going to look at some fundamentals of titration curves. And what is a favorite for biochemistry professors is the amino acid histidine. So what I'm doing here is I'm drawing four of the forms of histidine. And I'm going to explain why I did four a little later. But as you can see, as you go from the left to the right, uh, dif uh, different groups on the histidine are going to be protonated or deprotonated. And the question you always have to ask yourself is what form is it in? Is it in the protonated form or the deprotonated form? Okay? So uh, eventually you'll be able to identify the net charge of each of these based on, uh, based on the charges that you see on the molecule. Okay? And then you should be able to identify the Zwitter ionic form, which is basically. Uh, where you have both pluses and minuses within the same molecule that cancel each other out, okay? All right, now how did I do all that? How did we, how did we uh, determine that those were the charges and that was the order of things getting protonated or deprotonated? Well, we have to look at the structure of the histidine. And as you can see, the, what you have to ask yourself is what is, what are the ionizable groups on this amino acid and as you could there are three ionizable groups okay and therefore you have three PKAs so you have uh, all right let me go back a little bit you ha you you have the NH2 group you have the COOH group and then you have the histidine uh, R, the, the R group right so uh, now you're probably asking yourself how, how did I choose whether or not to to write it as NH3 plus or NH2 or COOH or COO minus. All right? Uh, well, it doesn't really matter. The point is that we identify that those are the groups that can receive or add a proton. Okay? And it's up to you to decide at what pH it is, uh, it comes in what, what form. Okay? So, so now let's go, let's look, let's look below. All right? So notice what happened. On the far left, I chose to draw it at COOH, okay? So, so since the pKa is 2, if it's the lowest of the three pKa's. So it's going to be the first one <coughs> to get protonated or deprotonated. So below pH of 2, it's going to look like the far left form, COOH. But once you, once you surpass its pKa, uh, the pH goes above pKa, then it's going to lose its proton, okay? And that's the one... Notice that the other side groups stay the same. The other side groups are in the protonated form. They're the NH3 and the histidine, the nitrogen, the basic nitrogen on the histidine side group, R group, is protonated. Those guys stay protonated until you surpass their pKa's. And since we're below 2, then um, we don't care... It doesn't care yet, all right? Because it's too low. The only thing that cares is the carboxyl group, right? So, all right, now let's go to the right. Look how I circled, I circled the, uh, the, the nitrogens from the histidine R group. So at this pH, at this pKa, uh, which is the next highest one, 6, the R group of the histidine starts mattering because that's the border at which the, the nitrogen... Uh, fluctuates between protonated and deprotonated, okay? But at this point, the carboxylic acid is always going to be at the, in the deprotonated form because we're done with its pKa because its pKa was down there at 2, but now we're up at around 6 now, okay? So the one that's fluctuating back and forth is the histidine, all right? So that's why I drew those two. Um, and you have to decide. Notice that the NH3 group doesn't care at this pH. That pH of around 6 or so, really anything that's below 10, anything that's below pKa, it's, it doesn't care. It's going to be protonated. It's the same, right? But as we go up, uh, the border between below and above pH of 10, that's when the pKa of 10 starts mattering. The NH2 group, look how I circle them, right? The NH, it becomes NH3, which is the protonated form, and then NH2, which is the deprotonated form. All right, so you always have to ask yourself, what is it? Is it protonated or deprotonated 
at that uh, pH range, all right? And, and you, you do that by ranking the pKa's. So as I went from the left to the right, I pulled off or put on protons on the appropriate side groups, ionizable groups, based on the pKa ranges, okay? And once you do that, you step back and you look at the molecule and you say, um, all right, what's the net charge? Okay, now you can, now, now you can do plus two, plus one, zero, minus one. And then once you identify the, the, the one with the, the form with a zero charge, then uh, you look at either side. So notice uh, what I'm going to do here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to highlight the side groups that are equilibrating on both sides of the Zwitter ionic form. Okay, and that's the key step. So the, you look at the pKa's of the side groups that are regulating the, the isoelectric form of the amino acid, and you average them. So you take 6 plus 10 divided by 2 is 8, as you see here. I didn't do 2 plus 6 divided by 2, all right? I did 6 plus 8, I'm sorry, 6 plus 10 divided by 2, all right? And that decision matters. You have to identify the charge of zero, look at both sides, and then average those two pKa's. And that's going to be your pi, or your isoelectric point. The, the, that's defined as the pH at which the majority of these molecules uh, looks like the Zwitter ionic form that is bracketed in yellow. Okay? So... Let's look at how we can use this knowledge and look how, how powerful it's going to be for us. So consider this practice question. At pH of 8, 50% of the enzyme X is catalytically active. Based on the given titration curve of the key residue, uh, determine, determine the percent of enzymes that are active. And they gave us a titration curve, right? And notice that, uh, all right, there are two ways that you can get the titration curve. You can get it this way, and notice the pH is on the x-axis, and then the volume of, of base is on the y-axis, right? Or they can give it, give it to you this way. pH is on the y-axis, and then the volume of sodium hydroxide is on the x. Uh, what really matters here is the significance of these diagonal red lines, all right? So you have to identify, you have to identify um, sort of the flat parts of the curve. And what I mean by that is you're identifying the places where as you increase the hydroxide concentration, the pH is relatively stable or it's buffered, okay? And so the reason why I know that this said enzyme X has a histidine is because... <clears throat> The pKa here uh, of this R group is going to be 6 because I know the 2 and the 10 are coming from the carboxylic acid and the amino acid. So the 6 is coming from the R group, and I memorized that 6 is the histidine R group pKa, okay? So uh, based on this graph, I know that it's histidine. So inside, inside the active site of the enzyme, I drew histidine, right? And notice... On the left side, you have the inactive form, and on the right side, you have the active form. So how did I know that the right side was active? Well, if you look at, if you look at the nitrogen that's equilibrating here, the one with the H and the one without an H, that's the, active, that's the basic nitrogen because that lone pair is going to grab protons, and it's going to do chemistry, all right? The other nitrogen stays the same. So it's active if the lone pair is available to go attack uh, a proton somewhere. See that? So the one on the left is the HA form. If you think of the Henderson Hasselbalch equation, there's the one on the right is the A minus form. So you have to make a decision which one is the active form. And see how there are a lot of little mini decisions along the way to solving this problem? So you see that the one on the right is the active form, the A minus, all right? So based, based on the problem, let's Let's write down the uh, Henderson-Hasselbalch, right? And we determined 
Sorry, I showed too much. I, we, we determined, that's how you set it up, that the pH was 5, right? But the pKa of the side group was 6. So 5 minus 6 equals negative 1. Um, and that's going to be equal to the log of the ratio of the A minus versus the HA. Now remember, which, which, of the, which one is active, the A minus or the HA? The A minus is, remember? Uh, because it has a free lone pair on the nitrogen. So they want us to calculate what's the ratio of the A minus to the HA, right? Oh, sorry. What's, what's the ratio of the A minus to the HA when the difference equals negative 1? Well, it's going to be 1 to 10, right? It's going to be 1 to 10. In other words, 10% 10 10 are going to be in the A form, A minus form, and 90% are going to be in the HA form. And you have to decide which one of those, the 10% or the 90% is the active. Well, we know that A minus is active, so it's 10% is active, all right? Uh, think about that. Now, here's a trick. Whenever the pKa minus, no, sorry, the pH minus the pKa equals positive 1 or minus 1, then you're always going to get a 90% to 10% ratio. So uh, that's just the way that the log works out, okay? But if the pKh minus the pKa is plus or minus 2, that means you're going to get a ratio of 99% to 1%, right? So you can quickly use this trick on an exam or a quiz uh, because because professors like to, they like to, they like to use easy easy math, but it will appear hard. Okay, but if you know the trick and why it works, it's easy. So in this case, it, we got minus one, which is why it was ninety to ten percent. So it's your decision to determine which one, the ninety percent or the ten percent, is the active form or not.